This instructional video will describe how to replace the seal assembly on Corkin's CoraFlow Autogas Regenerative Turbine Pumps for all models 60, 75, and 150 pumps. Please refer to the Installation, Operation, and Maintenance Manual, Item IF-102, and seal replacement instructions for Model 60, 75, and 150 CoraFlow pumps, Item number IF-201, for detailed information on these pumps. These manuals may be downloaded from our website at corkin.com. Please note these important safety tips. Periodic inspection and maintenance of the pump is essential. Inspection, maintenance, and installation of the pump must be performed by trained personnel. All procedures must comply with the Corkin Installation, Operation, and Maintenance Manual, applicable local codes, and safety standards. The transfer of toxic, flammable, or explosive substances is always at the user's risk. Equipment should only be operated by qualified personnel according to the applicable codes and safety standards. Take the time to review the installation, operation, and maintenance manual and seal replacement instructions before performing any maintenance procedures. The model number of the pump is located on a nameplate on top of the pump casing. A 60 or 75 model will also be identified with a stamp on the case. A 150 model will not be stamped. This pump is a model 150. Note the direction of the rotation arrow on the front of the pump cover. The autogas pump is designed to only rotate in a counterclockwise direction. Some motors can be wired to turn in a clockwise or counterclockwise direction, so make sure your motor is wired to match the direction of the rotation arrow when installing a new motor. All standard CoreFlow autogas pumps use the seal replacement kit 3189-1XA6. The letter at the end of the part number after the X indicates the O-ring material. A is the standard configuration and indicates Buna N. Optional O-ring material is available and indicated with a B for neoprene, D for Viton, G for ethylene propylene, and K for Calres. The box seal replacement kit includes important instructions, the rotating carbon and spring assembly, the seal sleeve assembly, the case cover O-ring, the rear housing O-ring, the seal sleeve o-ring that seals to the shaft, the impeller woodruff key, two retaining clips, the stationary seal seat, and a cardboard disc for installing the stationary seal seat into the housing. The tools required for this procedure are two o-ring picks, a number two flat blade screwdriver, a 22 millimeter socket and ratchet, a 12 inch adjustable wrench, a flat metal file, diagonal or side cutting pliers, and 300 to 400 grit emery cloth and Scotch-Brite. You will also need a can of spray lubricant or light oil and plenty of clean shop towels. Before you begin servicing the pump, make sure the pump and system have been depressurized. The seal replacement is an easy procedure, so it's not necessary to remove the pump from the piping. Keep your hands, the work area, tools, and parts clean. Begin by removing the bolts from the pump cover head with a 22 millimeter socket or adjustable wrench. This is a close tolerance fit, so if the cover head does not slide out easily, use a flathead screwdriver to slowly pry the cover head away from the pump casing. With the cover removed, note the O-ring that seals the cover to the casing. Older models may have clearance shims as well. Use a pick or small flathead screwdriver to pry off the retainer ring. Next, remove the impeller by pulling it off the shaft. If it is stuck, insert an existing bolt from the pump cover into one of the threaded pulling holes located on the impeller. Gently remove the impeller by pulling on the bolt. Inspect the impeller for damage or excessive wear. It is okay if there is some light scoring or scratches on the face of the impeller. If any fins are damaged or broken, the impeller must be replaced. Next, remove the impeller key from the shaft. With a pair of diagonal cutting pliers, grab the key firmly and slowly roll up as shown. Use a pick or small flathead screwdriver to pry off the inner retainer ring. Begin at the small tab at the end of the ring. Once you get it started, you can work around the ring to remove it from the shaft groove. Slide the ring off the shaft at a slight angle to prevent the ring from slipping into the outer shaft groove. 
Remove the seal assembly by sliding it off the shaft. If it does not slide off, you may gently pry with a screwdriver to free it up. Reach in with your fingers and remove the small sleeve seal o-ring from the shaft. Use one or two picks behind the flange of the seal housing to pull it forward and out of the case. It will come out easily once it slips out of the o-ring that holds it in place. Next, use a pick to remove the seal housing o-ring inside the pump casing. Use a light spray lubricant and clean shop towels to clean out the o-ring groove. Also, clean the shaft and remove any burrs around the keyway with a file or emery cloth. The pump shaft bearings should be checked by applying up and down or in and out movement on the shaft. Turn the shaft and check for any roughness in the bearings. If movement or roughness is present, the shaft bearings must be replaced. This will prevent seal failure. The seal seat needs to be removed from the housing. With a small screwdriver, start at the alignment notch as shown and gently pry around the circumference of the seal seat until it is free of the housing. Note the alignment pin in the housing that must match up with the slot in the seal seat during reassembly. Thoroughly clean the inside and outside of the existing housing using Scotch-Brite if necessary before reassembly. Before installing the new seal seat, lubricate the seal seat o-ring with a light coat of oil. Insert the seal seat into the housing and make sure the notch in the seat aligns with the locator pin in the back of the seal housing. To protect the seal seat during installation, place the small cardboard disc on top of the seal seat. Make sure the cardboard disc is clean. Using your fingers, gently push on the cardboard disc until the seal seat snaps into the seal housing. Make sure the locator pin is aligned with the notch in the seal seat. Clean the face of the seat with a light spray lubricant to remove any contaminants. Next, install the new O-ring in the back of the pump casing. Begin by feeding the O-ring into the groove and work it around with your fingers or a flat screwdriver until it is fully seated. Before you install the seal housing, lubricate the O-ring and the outside of the housing to help with the installation. Slide the seal housing over the shaft into the back of the case. Using your fingers on the flange of the housing, firmly press into the pump casing. Avoid touching the face of the seal seat. Make sure the seal housing slides through the O-ring and is seated to the back of the pump casing. To confirm the seal housing is seated completely, you may lightly tap the outer flange surface on the front of the seal housing with a screwdriver. Do not tap on the seal seat located inside the housing. The seal assembly must be assembled before it can be installed in the pump. Align the hole of the seal spring with the locator pin on the new seal sleeve and slide the spring into place. Apply lubricant to the inner o-ring of the carbon. Align notches in the carbon as shown with the locators on the spring assembly and press in the place. Next, lubricate and install the new seal sleeve o-ring and slide it on the pump shaft. The o-ring should rest against the shoulder on the shaft as shown. Before installing the seal assembly, make sure your hands and all surfaces are clean. Rinse the face of the seal seat and shaft with a spray lubricant. Make sure the alignment pin on the inside of the seal sleeve aligns with the keyway on the shaft. Slide the seal assembly onto the shaft and over the sleeve o-ring until it comes in contact with the face of the seal seat. Now install the new inner retaining ring. Avoiding the first groove in the shaft, slide the retaining ring on the shaft to the face of the seal sleeve. The spring of the seal assembly must be compressed so the ring can be seated in the groove. You can easily compress the spring and seat the retaining ring into the rear groove by using the impeller. Invert the impeller so the hub side faces in. Push the impeller inward until you hear and feel the retaining ring snap into the groove on the pump shaft. Now remove the impeller. If necessary, screw one of the cover head bolts into the impeller and gently pull it off the shaft. Align the new woodruff or impeller key into the center of the shaft keyway. Using an adjustable wrench, apply pressure to the key by gently rocking the wrench up and down on the shaft while tightening the wrench. 
Continue until the key is firmly seated and flat in the keyway. Be careful not to damage or score the shaft. Now install the impeller. If the key is properly installed, the impeller should slide smoothly on the shaft and go all the way to the back of the casing. If the impeller does not slide on smoothly, use emery cloth or a file to deburr the shaft and then clean thoroughly with a spray lubricant. Before installing the new outer retaining ring, make sure that the impeller is pushed all the way back. Install the retaining ring in the first groove on the shaft. It is important to make sure the ring opening is at 90 degrees to the keyway on the shaft. This ensures the impeller key cannot slide off the shaft during operation. Before installing the cover head, gently file or use emery cloth on the mating surfaces to make sure they are clean and smooth. Lubricate the new O-ring and install in position as shown on the cover head. Install the clearance shims at this time if you are working on an older model. Align and install the cover head onto the pump case making sure the cork and name is in the horizontal position. Install the cover head bolts and tighten in a crisscross manner with a socket or an adjustable wrench. Torque the bolts to specification listed for your model in the installation, operation, and maintenance manual. Make sure the pump shaft turns freely. On older models, you may need to add or reduce the number of clearance shims if the shaft binds or has excessive end play. This completes the seal replacement procedure for all models 60, 75, and 150 Coraflow Autogas Regenerative Turbine Pumps. If the pump is going back into service, slowly pressurize with vapor. This can be accomplished by slowly opening the bypass return line on most systems. If the pump is placed into short or long-term storage, close all openings and partially fill the pump with some light oil to protect against rust and corrosion. For intermittent duty, the frame bearings generally require lubrication every three months. However, continuous duty operations may require monthly lubrication. Corkin recommends only using military grade 10924C ball bearing grease with a temperature rating of minus 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Please refer to the troubleshooting section of the Coraflow Installation, Operation and Maintenance Manual, item number IF102, for detailed information. This manual may be downloaded from the literature section of our website at corkin.com. Visit our website often for the latest industrial compression and pumping solutions from Corkin. You will also find updates and new information on all of our products.